Welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in mindset, weight loss, business, and more. Learn our top tips so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, feel unstoppable, unshakable, and unbreakable. Currently serves as a city manager of Dixon, Illinois. He's the host of the Leadership Excellent podcast. He's an Dynamic leadership motivational speaker specializing in creating leadership cultures, employee engagement, ownership, belonging, change leadership, and crisis leadership. His leadership has been tested by the most difficult situations, not even including a global pandemic and hostage crisis type situations, leading the city of Dixon back from the 500... Um, I'm sorry, $54 million loss. Danny Langloss, welcome. Welcome, how are you? Good, $54 million loss, that's huge. Yeah, so in uh, April of 2012, the FBI came by to see me. I was the police chief at the time and let me know they were doing a search warrant at City Hall uh, because of our comptroller, Rita Cronwell. And by the time the investigation was over, they determined she'd embezzled $54 million from the city over a period of 20 years. So you can imagine the fallout from that. Um, And so we became pretty battle tested, created a great team, fought back, amazing things are happening in Dixon now. We've completely rebounded. We recovered $50 million of the money uh, through some out of court lawsuits and uh, and then things are going well. But yeah, it was was probably the most challenging uh, time of my life in, in spite of some of the other things we've, you know, been blessed to be part of. Well, congratulations on that. I mean, she must have been really good at embezzling to get away with that much money over 20 years. That's like insane. And I know you've dealt with like hostage crisis and things like that too. Yeah. You know, she's a sociopath. Uh, She was there for 30 years. She was the best at earning trust. She treated people better than they expected to be treated. She was on top of things. You know, we didn't have the right system set up. We were in a commission form of government. We didn't have the right internal controls. So she made the bills, wrote the checks, cashed the checks, handled the accounts, like the, the way you wouldn't want to do it. Uh, but we sit very, very well now. We've got, you know, over $12 million in reserves. We've accomplished a bunch of projects. We're expanding the city, tons of economic development, even through COVID. And we've really put together a great team that we're just so proud of. Well, welcome to the podcast, Danny. I've been following your career for so long on LinkedIn. I know we met on LinkedIn through mutual friends, and I know that you are such a fine example of leadership. So let's jump into um, my questions about leaders set the energy of an organization. Do you want to get into that a little bit? Yeah. One of the things that we talk about with leaders when we're doing our presentations or working with people or developing our own leaders is we ask the question, are you a thermostat or a thermometer? Think about that. I love right? that. A, a thermostat sets the temperature in the room. A thermometer takes the temperature. And as leaders, we've got to set the temperature, set the tone, set the positive energy in, in every room we walk into. We can't walk into rooms where there's negativity and problems and have our energy level go to there. You know, as when we set that tone, it, it really begins with our energy and inserting that positive energy. But this is also where, you know, we're sharing the vision the greater vision and purpose that we'll later align our team members to. And it's just, it's so important. But when we do this, the the part that I think leaders kind of fall down on is they believe in it and they say it and they mean it, but they don't do it. So we got to combine words with action. We got to walk the talk. We got to lead by example. Uh, We've always got to ask more out of ourselves than we do of other people. And we've really got to be there to support people and, and just be very consistent in our energy so people know what to expect. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to sit down and talk to you today, because I really see a lot of the guests you get on your podcast and a lot of the things, the topics that you address on leadership, to me, reflects more modern leadership, where you're saying you want the team to be enrolled with the vision, the vision, 
And um, I want to talk to you also a little bit more about the power of belonging. How important is that in an organization these days? Yeah. So, you know, when I was putting things together for our conversation, leader, Lisa, and you said, you know, what, what makes leaders unstoppable, you know, and this setting the tone and the energy, understanding the power of belonging, and then aligning purpose and driving to ownership within our team. So belonging is so important. All of us as human beings need to feel as if we belong. If we're just trying to fit in, we're just kind of surviving. When we belong, we're thriving. And there's several things that go in and contribute to that. You know, under this topic, uh, it, you know, team members are our gold, right? It, it, you take care of your people, they'll take care of the results. It's all about creating this environment that's even more than a great team that transitions into the feeling of family. And that's a powerful thing. And that takes a lot of time. So when we talk about belonging, there's a lot of research on belonging. Belonging is one of our seven pillars of ownership. There's two primary things that create a feeling of belonging. The first is mutual care and concern. I generally care about you and you generally care about me. The second wow. is, is frequent, pleasant interactions. So when we talk about frequent, pleasant interactions, they, they don't even always have to be pleasant. They just have to not have negativity in them right? So they can be neutral. Most of the time we want them to be pleasant, but we're not talking about huge, big things. We're talking about little things like in the morning when you see somebody smiling and saying, good morning, Lisa, how are you doing today? Right. Or, you know, when you walk by the custodian who's cleaning the floor, getting the place looking good, saying, you know, thank you, Bob. I really appreciate all your work. This place looks amazing. Um, these little things of gratitude and thanking them, make, acknowledging people, letting them know they're cared for. Um, everybody, Lisa, needs to feel seen. How we show up is crazy. The levels of trust go up, enthusiasm, connection, loyalty, willingness to go the extra mile, positive energy, willingness to collaborate and be part of a team. Our confidence increases. We're more willing to speak up and share our ideas. So this idea of belonging is such an important important concept that needs to be talked about more. And when you talk about belonging, it is also disarming somewhat in the, in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because when everybody belongs, right, you are, you are making sure there's equity. You're making sure there's inclusion. And through our hiring practices, we make sure to intentionally create diversity. So it's so, so important. A, a couple of things that I wanted to share from just sure. a little bit of the research around belonging, if I could. Please, I love this topic. Yeah, so when people feel like they belong, their job performance increases by 56%. Wow. Um, turnover decreases by 50%. You talk about the great resignation yeah. and trying to recruit new talent but retain talent. When people feel like they belong, they're 50% less likely to leave. They're 75% less likely to use sick time. Overall sick time decreases by 75%. A company of 10,000 people, and most companies aren't that big, but to give you an idea, that's $52 million in savings. Huge wow. money. Um, and people who feel like they belong are 167% more likely to be promoted, twice as likely to receive, um, to receive raises. And so, you know, it, it, the power of belonging is so important. I miss, I miss said one thing. Their promotional scores are 167% higher. They're 18 times more likely to be promoted. So that really drives home the importance of belonging and feeling like we belong. And, and even more important than that solid feeling is making sure people don't feel excluded. When we feel excluded, that is actually a physical pain that manifests inside of us, that diminishes our quality of life, our mental health, that leads people to, to negative things. I call them the great destroyers of teams and organizations, gossip, rumors, envy, jealousy, backstabbing, all those things. So we've really got to make sure as we create belonging, that if we see any exclusion, we've got to immediately bring those people into the belonging side because the impacts and effects of belonging are game changing for organizations. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to sit down and talk to you. When you hear about belonging, think things like Brene Brown speaks about belonging and the modern leadership style that I see you exemplifying with the great resignation. You should be running the whole country right now. I mean, 
you want to have less turnover because that's expensive when you have to like hire people, train people. And the way that you talk about asking the janitor how his day is and acknowledging him for doing a great job, like that is just so cool to me, cool kind of leadership where people are going to want to stay with you. They want to go the extra mile and you probably have no problem with retention. You know, we're, we're very like, have a great, you know, family. You know, the word we used to work, use when we were at the police department was team. And towards the end, we turned to family. And now we've turned to family and city family and uniting people. Um, you know, Brene Brown has done incredible work. I, I love her book, Dare to Lead. I love her talk about vulnerability, humility of leadership. Um, you know, I've, I've read a book and done some research where I saw, you know, the, the one of the things on the, the janitor study, that the number one driver of meaning, of us feeling like we matter, that we're meaningful. Yeah. Is feeling like we belong. And so, so I think we need to intentionally talk about this more in leadership because the cultures we create and the work experience we create, and you're right, you know, when you look at 21st century leadership, that, that is a focus on leading the whole person. There's no more of this separate work life, personal life, right? Like right. people have to do the work when they're there, but you want to get to know people holistically you, because when you do that, you can meet people individually where they're at, right? Like right now, somebody who's leading me um, has an understanding for the last five weeks. It's been, it's been very difficult. We've had COVID come through oh all three God. of us in the house. We've You're had sorry. then influenza come through. We're lacking sleep. And so knowing and, and, and having connection, you feel like you belong and having conversations, you know that. And as a leader, how can you support? And to me as a person, you know, and to me, my bosses are the city council because I'm the city manager right now. But to have their support just makes me so much more motivated to do the very best job I can do for them and to far exceed their expectations. And that's really the, the power of belonging, the power of feeling appreciated, being cared for, feeling like you matter. I love this new 21st style of leadership. And I want to ask one more question just to dive a little bit deeper into this topic because thermostat rather than thermometer is amazing and belonging is so amazing because with the amount of time we are spending at work it seems like now more than ever we're working more rather than less so how important also too is it to align our purpose to create ownership within your family of work yeah so aligning purpose you know, so the seven pillars of ownership are psychological safety. That's foundational. The second is sense of belonging. Then it's aligning purpose. And these are all foundational pieces to create ownership. So what's ownership? Ownership is the extreme emotional and psychological connection of a person to their team, the organization, and the goals of the organization. When people have ownership, they do things because it's important to them, not because somebody told them to do it. They're constantly looking to make things better. They're proactively solving problems right? And they're invested in this company as if they own it, which is such a powerful, powerful driver. So when we talk about aligning purpose, right? We, we hear so much about purpose these days, Lisa. Our friend David Marlowe, the Ikigai uh, yeah. expert, talks a lot about purpose. And it's so important because people are so purpose-driven. That's one of the drivers. People have had all this time in the great resignation to reflect and say, does my life matter? It, and, and does what I do have meaning, Right. right. Do I belong? What is my purpose? What is my legacy? And so what we got to do, and this doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be curing cancer or going to the moon, right? But we need to intentionally align the purpose of our organization with the purpose of every single team member. So they get that emotional and psychological commitment. So they become fully invested. You know, you talk about the custodian, for example, right? You know, the, the custodian isn't somebody who sweeps the floors and cleans the toilets and COVID the custodian is the front line of keeping people safe, of keeping the environment Absolutely. clean, safe, sterile and non COVID. We're, we're a first impression society in the United States, 100%. And right. in non COVID, the custodian sets the tone for the brand and the trust of the organization. Because when people walk through your door and the floors are shining and the glass is clean and the counters are clean, and when they go into the restrooms and everything is spotless, that says something about the quality and professionalism in the organization. And there is service within that and great pride 
within that. And so we've got to understand that every single role, no matter what organization you're in, there's importance or the role wouldn't be there. And it's our job to let them know their importance, to tie into their purpose, to truly understand through interacting with them, what drives, motivates them, what lights them on fire and let them know how what they're doing aligns with the purpose of the organization and how we couldn't do it without them. And when we do that, we create ownership. And then on top of that, we create this feeling or this energy of what I call the synergy of champions. And that is, you know, no one person can know everything. No one person can do everything. It takes all of these purpose-driven owners. And when you combine them moving in a common direction and purpose, the synergy that, that creates isn't a one-time multiplier. It's a 10-time multiplier. And that's really how you create these high-performing cultures and achieve and sustain organizational excellence. Well, I absolutely love what you're up to in the world. I've um, seen, I once heard about a company that once they were interviewing high level employees that they flew in for an interview, they would wait and see what the Uber driver thought of them before they decided on hiring someone. Because I truly believe that we're all humans and how you treat one person should be how you treat everybody. And the way that you're treating everyone within your organization, it's easy to see why you're a new modern leader that's so successful in creating a culture of family. I, you know, Lisa, I love that example. How do you treat the Uber driver? How do you treat the receptionist at the front desk? How you treat people is how you treat people. And if you value every human being the same exact way, regardless of title, man, we, we want you on our team. And those are people that, that we want on our teams. Absolutely. Me too. Those are people who I want in my life. Where can people find more of your good stuff, Danny? Well, thank you, Lisa. I'm the host of the Leadership Excellence Podcast. Uh, we're about ready to launch season three. We're about 67 episodes in. So grateful uh, for, for all the incredible guests that have come on and shared so many areas. It's all leadership. You know, leadership principles transform across all professions, strategy specific, but people are people. DannyLangloss.com is my website. Um, I'm in the process of revamping that and launching a new one, but the website's up. The podcast is there. Some stuff from our keynotes and speaking is there. And the number one platform I'm on where we become great friends. I'm a huge fan of your work, Lisa. You're doing amazing work is, is LinkedIn. So Danny Langloss at LinkedIn. So I'll make sure just to get you those links. So, you know, I'm always looking to grow the network, work with people, learn from people, help people. So would, would love to connect. Thanks, Danny. Thanks for being guests on Whole CEO with Lisa G. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for coming to Whole CEO with Lisa G. After over 20 years helping people lose weight and get fit, I'm so excited to announce that I found the missing link with my coaching. Message me if you want to learn how to look better, feel better, and go faster with a master. Lisa G at lisagfit.com.